Good morning and a warm welcome to our service of worship at Bridge of Allen Parish Church this morning. All are welcome, whether you're a regular attender at church or here for the very first time, you are welcome and we would invite you to continue the fellowship that we hope you feel during the course of the service at the Coffee Fellowship in the Chalmers Hall after the service. There are some intimations on the order of service to which I would commend you. Uh, there is an additional intimation this morning, and that is to say that if you are at Coffee Fellowship, and if you weren't planning on going, then I would encourage you to do so, um, there will be a special display of the artwork which the children did during last week's holiday club. And that's very well worthwhile going to see. And you can also see the story of what the children have been doing at the holiday club during the course of last week. Uh, we should uh, give thanks to, to, to the leader, to our youth worker, Linda, and to all others who helped out during the course of last week. Um, I'm also happy to say that during the course of the holiday club, as part of um, our commitment towards raising um, a ton of food for Startup Stirling, uh, the children uh, managed to donate an incredible 7.5 kilograms of food. And I've had to work out what 7.5 kilograms is, um, but I suspect that it's well over a stone, which is, is uh, quite good. Or as, as, um, as Andrew told me, um, uh, a good healthy toddler in weight. So, so well done um, children and that should be an encouragement to everybody else. Dan isn't with us this morning in his place. I'm very happy to, to welcome um, Andrew Kimmett. Um, Andrew is a ministerial candidate with a church currently studying in Aberdeen, uh, but I think he'll tell you a little bit more about himself later on. But welcome, Andrew. We're very pleased that you're here. Thank you, Alistair. And good morning. Um, I, I live now just outside Dundee, but I grew up not a long way away from here in Bannockburn. So um, Bridge of Allen was local to me growing up and was the site. Um, I mean, quite apart from its reputation, uh, Scotland renowned as being Andy Murray's uh, place of choice to go for fish and chips. Um, it is to me a place of both triumph and disaster. Triumph when I was 13 and we won uh, three of us the, <laughs> the local table tennis league. I was fanatical table tennis uh, fan uh, when I was a young teenager. We won the league, which was held at Bridge of Allen Sports Centre. Um, and disaster, I, I failed my first driving test in Bridge of Allen. Uh, at the Fountain Roundabout, I hesitated. So it was a, an error of caution rather than um, recklessness. But nonetheless, triumph and disaster in Bridge of Allen, I'm hoping this morning will be uh, not disaster, at least. <laughs> so then it's a joy and a privilege to join with you this morning. Let us worship God. In our reading, we hear Hannah saying this, The Lord has filled my heart with joy. How happy I am because of what he has done. No one is holy like the Lord. There is none like him. No protector like our God. Let us sing then of our protector, singing at hymn number 81, I to the hills will lift mine eyes.
as we approach God in worship, let us pray. Lord God, your Son, Jesus, said, Come to me, all that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. It is this Jesus who calls us, Jesus who is only love, who has been love for us from the very beginning. It is he who calls us today by name to come to him because we need mercy and help. So come now to Christ who is healing for every hurt, for every hope, for every despair. Find in him fresh green roots of new life for every little death within us. Because it is Jesus who says, come to me and I will give you rest. And so now we do come. We come to Christ carrying the heavy burden of much that is wrong. And we seek to lay down the weight, which is sometimes more than we can carry. And so we confess our sins. Knowing our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, too deep to undo. So Lord, forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear. Set us free from a past that we cannot change and open us to a future in which we can yet be changed. Grant us grace, Lord, to grow more in your likeness and image through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. So it is by the grace of Jesus Christ that we pray we may know ourselves as forgiven by God and strengthened in the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that we may be formed as your children By your love, we pray, make us instruments of your peace. Where there's hatred, let us sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, give faith. Where there is despair, give hope. And where there is sadness, joy everlasting. All this we ask in the assurance and strength of Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, good morning. Good morning. None of you have ever met me before, have you? No, and I've not met you before. Isn't that strange? But I've heard some news about you. I've heard that there was a holiday club on this week. Is that right? Were any of you at it? One or two of you. That was good. And I saw a bit of some of the stories you did, and I know that we're going to see some of the artwork you all made. And you brought something at the beginning of holiday club each day, did you? Yeah, what did you bring? Yeah, yeah. You brought food, yeah, for Startup Sterling, is that right? And Startup Sterling give food to people who don't really have enough food. And when I live, there are places that do similar things. I meet some of the people occasionally who don't have some of the food uh, or food, they need extra food. 
And you know how grateful they are? They are so grateful for people like you who bring in food so that they can have food when they're hungry. So I just wanted to say, before we say anything else, a huge well done to you and for your artwork and to say how special and important a thing is that you can set examples to all of us about what we should be doing with the things that we have. So thank you, firstly, for that. So that's what I know about you. What do you know about me? I'm not quite a minister, but I'm on the way to becoming a minister. So <laughs> you're not wrong there. Did any of you listen really hard at the beginning and listen for my name? Can any of you remember? Yeah, yeah. Alistair, it's not Alistair, it was Alistair that said hello to me. Oh, we're looking at the order of service. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Andrew, yeah, that's my name, Andrew. Names are important, aren't they? You've all got names, don't you? Yes. None of you have not got a name. Did you know you've a right to a name? The United Nations has a charter that says that are, if you're a child, you have these basic rights and you've got a right to a name. So you've all got a name, which is good. Your rights are looked after so far. What are your names? Alexander. You're Alexander. <laughs> Who else have we got, Alexander? Hmm? Oscar. Oscar. Anyone else? Amelia. Amelia. Daniel, Daniel. Rachel, Aaron. Aaron. Any other names? Georgia. Georgia. Thank you, Georgia. Any other names? Elsa. Elsa. Is that right? Yeah. Naomi, nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Names are important. Do you know, we're going to, um, well, the, the grown-ups later are going to think about someone who had a name, like most people, called Hannah. And Hannah was special for lots of reasons, but one of the reasons that the Bible says Hannah is special has actually a bit to do with who Hannah then gave birth to. Who of you are good at reading? If I spell okay, okay. If I spell something out on the step here, do you think you can have a go? So what have we started with? Samuel. There we are. And Samuel is in the Bible. And Samuel, we're told, was a child who, well, an odd thing happened to Samuel. When he was very young, he was given to the church to look after. He had his mum, Hannah, but Hannah gave him to, to the church to look after. And a man called Eli looked after him. And that's, that's how his life went. Until one night, he was sleeping. And then in the middle of the night, a voice comes to him and says, Samuel, Samuel. And he thinks it's Eli through in the next door. So he runs, go, runs through, goes to the old man Eli and says, what did you call me for? What can I do to help? And Eli says, no, no, no. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't call you through here. Just you go back to bed. And the voice comes again, Samuel, Samuel. And again, Samuel gets up and runs through to Eli. What can I do? What can I do to help? I wasn't calling you. Go back to bed. And a third time, Samuel, Samuel. And he goes back to Eli and Eli says, it wasn't me that calls you, but Eli's worked out what's happening now. Eli says, it's God that's calling you. Next time, say, open your mouth, Lord, that I may listen and speak to me. And so that's what happens. And the Lord speaks to Samuel and tells him lots of wonderful things. And throughout his life tells Samuel lots of wonderful things. But the thing that I think is so special about this story is that when God calls Samuel, he calls Samuel by his name. And God calls each of us by our name. And we're told in the New Testament, when Jesus comes, Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. And the good shepherd calls each of his followers, each of his sheep, by their name. So you've all got names. And they're really special names, whether they're Georgia or Oscar or Naomi or Alexander. <laughs> and because our names are special, when we have sung afterwards, I would like to pray for lots of people who have got names but I'm going to need your help. I'm going to need good spellers and good people that can run and find out people's names. And look at all these letters we've got. Got all these letters. 
So what we're going to do uh, during the hymn is you can go and you can find someone's name and you can bring it back to me and we'll spell it together. And then at the end, what we'll do after the hymn, we'll pray for everyone, name, everyone whose name we've got down here. How does that sound? Can you help me in that task? Good. If you don't want to, that's fine. You can sing as well. Um, and the grown-ups are certainly going to sing. So uh, I've forgotten the number of the hymn, but I know it's I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. 251. So let's sing together. 251.
Well, fantastic. We've got some names. We've also got a big jumble of letters. Thank you very much for your help there. That's a lot of names, and I'm sure we have in our heads a lot more names as well. So shall we pray? Let's pray. Loving God, as we come to worship you this morning, we bear in our hearts many names that we bring before you in prayer. And so we come knowing these people and knowing people with these names and pray for your love and peace with them. For Daniel and Alexander, for mums and dads everywhere, for Naomi, for Rachel, for Bill, for Erin, for Lola, for Oscar, for Tori, for Ewan, for Dan, for Amelia, for Samuels and Hannah's everywhere. We pray as well for Dan and Kirsty and Zoe as they're on holiday. And we pray thinking in the quiet of all those whose names we would add to this list just now. Lord, to you we trust all these names, all these people, all their stories, knowing that you know each one of them by name, that you call each one of them by name, that you call each of us by name. We pray too this morning for those who need our prayers but whose names we don't know. We think of children in Syria, in Aleppo. We think of refugees everywhere and that where they've stayed, we pray in desperate hope they might find safety and security and that where folk have fled, they might find safe passage and a warm welcome. We pray for children the world over who live with trauma. We think of the children of Palestine, where there are more children living with clinically diagnosable trauma than aren't. We pray for those around the world who hunger and who thirst. And that as a God of meeting all needs, all needs will be met. And we pray, Lord, for the children close at home, those who've been at Holiday Club this week, those in Bridge of Allen and throughout Scotland who, having been on holiday in October, will return to school. Let them return refreshed, rested, and ready to grow in you. Lord, we trust all these names and all the people whose names we don't know to your love and to your mercy, to your kindness this morning because of the grace and for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Thank you.
The reading today is taken from 1 Samuel, chapter 1, reading from verses 9 to 20, and then chapter 2, reading from verses 1 to 10. And this starts on page 271 of the Pew Bible. Once, when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servants for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, May your servant find favour in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elanka made love to his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies, for I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God, a God who knows and by him deeds are weighed. The bows of the warriors are broken, but those who stumbled are armed with strength. Those who were full hire themselves out for food, but those who were hungry are hungry no more. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she who has had many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exalts. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honour. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. On them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful servants, but the wicked will be silenced in the place of darkness. It is not by strength that one prevails. Those who oppose the Lord will be broken. The Most High will thunder from heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Amen. Thank you. So as we come to meditate on God's word for us this morning, let's sing together and sing hymn number 117, Mothering God, You Gave Me Birth. <laughs>
So let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of your presence amongst us now, open the mind of God to us, that in your light we may see light, and in your strength be strong. Amen. The story of Hannah, our reading for this morning, is one, I think, of the absolute gems of the Old Testament. In the vast arc of the story of God and his people, the episode of Hannah and her son Samuel marks a real turning point in the history of God's people. No longer, as we have been in this whistle-stop tour of the Bible that the narrative lectionary takes us on, no longer are we blundering our way through the desert with Moses and the Israelites, but now we're in the promised land. And the episode of Hannah comes after the succession of leaders of the Israelites called Judges, who've had mixed success in taking the nation on its walk with God. As always seems to be the case for God's people then and now, that period with the judges went well only for so long before disintegrating into chaos. It's in that chaos that we find Hannah's story. Hannah's story sets in place the foundation for a new golden age of Israel. It's her son Samuel who first appoints a king and then identifies and anoints the second king of Israel, that great king, David. So that's where Hannah's story fits into the wide arc of the Bible story of God with his people. She's the mother of a great son. But her story, as we've heard it this morning, is far richer and far more complex than simply telling us that she's the mother of a great son. It's a richer story, it's a complex story, and it's a difficult story. Hannah's story is difficult. Difficult because it's a story of pain. We find Hannah weeping bitterly in her prayers to God. It's difficult because the issue at stake is her childlessness. And that can be a painful subject. It's difficult because in it we find a woman's experience and communication with God rebuked and rejected by a man with power and authority. And millennia later, that's a pattern that's still often too true. It's difficult because in it we find Hannah doing that thing that we probably all know we shouldn't do, making a bargain with God in her prayers. And it's difficult because God answers that bargain and fulfills it. It's difficult because whether it's childlessness like Hannah or the life of a loved one or some other deep longing of the heart, We can all probably name times when we begged and pleaded in our prayers and found them not fulfilled, at least not in the way that we hoped for. It's difficult because after dedicating her young boy in the temple, after giving her boy away, Hannah is found breaking into joyful song. And that's odd. And her song tells of a world turned upside down. It paints a picture of what God's justice looks like. And that vision is so radically different to the power-warped, privilege-dominated world that we all live in today. So it's a difficult and a complex story. But it's rich too. And so now, this morning, it's our job to open ourselves to it, to ask God's inspiration from it, and to see whether we might just find something 
to learn and to grow from in Hannah's story. I hope we can. And I wonder whether a way to begin on that journey is to ask ourselves a question. The question I propose is this. Who, who is Hannah today to us? Who is Hannah to us? There are many ways of reading the character of Hannah, and I'm going to propose three. But first, the setting. Hannah enters our story having come on a once a year pilgrimage to the house of the Lord at Shiloh. Now lost to the sands of time, Shiloh was at the time of the story an oasis of reverence and devotion to the Lord God in a nation in chaos and turmoil. Shiloh was a holy place, a house of rest and of worship. It was a place to meet God. And Hannah went with Elkanah to Shiloh, hoping to find all those things. Today, Hannah might come to a place like this, to church on a Sunday morning. Then, Hannah went as an annual pilgrimage. She was to those who were there regularly, to those who lived nearby and worked there, an outsider. Today's Hannah might be the same. We might see her but once a year, at Christmas or on Easter, on a significant anniversary. Who is Hannah, who is that Hannah to us? Well, if nothing else, we must imagine her as one here with us. And as we paint her many portraits, we can ask herself, where is she amongst us? Where's she sitting? What's she doing? What does she look like? And what did she look like when she came in this morning? How do we relate to her? Will she stay for tea and coffee? And who would speak to her? What might that Hannah say? Who is Hannah to us? Portrait one. Hannah is the childless mother seeking sanctuary. She's the one who has longed for a child and in her hopes and her dreaming has met only pain, has met hopeless frustration and has met most likely deep grief along the way. The weight of expectation around her has only weighed on this more heavily. And when she has opened up to her husband to speak of it, his response, as we found just before the reading, was well-intentioned, though perhaps thoughtless. He said this, but, but you have me. Am I not enough for you? Am I not ten children to you? Hannah comes then this morning with misery compounded with too many sleepless nights behind her, too many tears shed, and here she hopes desperately to find sanctuary, a place to pray. Today's Hannah comes perhaps at the end of this week, which has just passed, Baby Loss Awareness Week, feeling particularly sore. She comes perhaps like a Facebook friend of mine who bravely posted a picture of a tattoo explaining the significance of all five stars inked on her forearm to the sons that we all know and the other three children carried for a time but who were never met face to face, the fruit of hope but who went unnamed. Today's Hannah comes perhaps triggered by the plot line of an EastEnders episode portraying miscarriage. And we might know the face and the story of today's Hannah, 
we likely won't. But she'll be here anyway, seeking sanctuary, not pity, seeking God's listening ear to the longing of her heart, and perhaps our listening ear too, though perhaps not. Either way, today's Hannah is brave, so very brave. And how will we relate to her? Who is Hannah to us? Portrait two. Hannah is a woman who's come to pray to the God she knows is everlasting, ever listening, ever loving, but who finds those prayers dismissed by the man in charge. This Hannah is a woman with faith so deep that her prayers defy language, that wordlessly her prayers proceed from her deepest being in groans, in tears, in silently moving lips. And the man comes along and assumes she's drunk, tells her to stop making a show of herself and sober up. In one exchange, this Hannah's act of deep faith is written off as worthless, or worse, sacrilegious. Her tears of pain, she is told, should be tears of shame. But, but Hannah stands up for herself. She challenges the reproach shown to her with the truth. She doesn't even return the insult that was shown to her. Hannah transforms the encounter saying, no, I'm not drunk. I've come here to pour out my sorrows. In explaining that, she transforms the encounter and leaves with a blessing from Eli, the priest, when actually all along, it was her presence there that was the blessing. That was Hannah of the story. And today's Hannah would know that story only too well. The list of times when the man who thought he was in charge had sought to diminish her experience or talked over her, or told her to stop, to stop making a show. That list is too long to remember now. Today's Hannah comes to church with a faith profound and a trust in God that runs deep. Today's Hannah will be sitting through a wordy service watching this man whom she's never met droning from a high pulpit and will feel it unlikely to fit her expression of faith. But she'll patiently tell the truth of her own faith and her own story. She accommodates the shortcomings of the religion going on around her, and perhaps, perhaps the presence of today's Hannah amongst us will transform for those of us around her the routine of another Sunday morning into a time of mutual blessing. Today's Hannah is used to navigating a world where power revolves around privilege and around patriarchy. A world where misogynists can run for presidency of the US where the positive voice of women is undermined by the blunders of men in charge, where authority is assumed in places that it's thoroughly absent, while her own prophetic acts are condemned. But today's Hannah persists. Today's Hannah challenges. Today's Hannah stands up for truth, and amidst her aching and sighing and exhaustion, takes on the further burden of putting the rest of us right. And she shouldn't have to, but she does. Today's Hannah is bold, so bold. Portrait three, who is Hannah to us? Hannah is the one who receives from God the answer to her prayers and who responds 
not with vindication or with triumphalism, but with dedication and with joy. Hannah is a woman whose song voices God's vision for his people, of a world turned upside down, of the greatest becoming least and the least becoming greatest. Hannah's song is of justice, of radical equality, of judgment on greed and excess, and of the celebration of the meek and the poor. Hannah's is a song and a vision echoed long after her. On the lips of Mary, and embodied by Emmanuel, God with us, the Jesus who, as very God amongst us, prioritised the humble and the brokenhearted and the set upon, the Christ of the Beatitudes. Blessed are the meek, blessed are the humble, blessed are the poor in heart, blessed are those who are persecuted, blessed are they who mourn. Hannah is not an object of our pity, nor is her story only one of grief and of subjugation. Hers is a voice of prophecy and of faith, and we have much, much to learn from her. Today's Hannah sits among us as a woman who in action and in word and in song build up those who are in greatest need. Today's Hannah cares for all those around her. Today's Hannah speaks up for those whose voice is overlooked. Today's Hannah knows that there will be a reckoning for those whose influence and comfort comes at the expense of others. Today's Hannah is perceptive. Today's Hannah's actions give life and dignity. Today's Hannah, Hannah is a prophet in her own time. Today's Hannah is brilliant, truly brilliant. Three portraits. Who is Hannah to us? She sits prays and sings among us. She's broken and brazen and burdened, and she is brave and bold and brilliant. That's Hannah. And what about us? What about our part? If this is who Hannah is to us, who ought we be to Hannah? Well, first of all, if we recognize in ourselves any tendency towards being an Elkanah, her husband who turns to her and says, have you not already got enough? Am I not enough? Then we must challenge ourselves not to limit the aspirations and the hopes and the dreams of those around us, especially not the Hannahs. Listening keeping in check our sense of too easily pricked sense of self, bearing burden with each other. That's our lesson. And so too, if we recognize any tr trace of Eli the priest in ourselves, the one who judged Hannah from afar, who spoke too soon without knowledge of what was really going on, then we must challenge ourselves to seek to understand before speaking. For those of us who carry social privilege through gender or ethnicity, through our sexuality or education or our age, we must seek to learn to walk more carefully and lightly with that privilege, to seek to understand how heavy our footsteps can be on this earth, and what reverberations our words and actions can have. And to realize that they are too often 
negative consequences, but that with care and by the grace of Christ, they can be transformed into words of peace. And if we've heard neither the correction that Elkanah or Eli needed, then we can join with Hannah in the joyful chorus that was her song of joy. And we can go from here rejoicing in the God who will turn the world upside down, who in Christ lifts the poor from the dust and raises the needy from their misery. The God who puts those who are trodden down in places of honour and has them break bread with princes, indeed even with the Prince of Priests, Jesus Christ our Lord. In the example of that Jesus, let us all grow, and in his name, amen. And so we do indeed take up the invitation from Hannah to join her in joyful song, even above earth's lamentations, singing together hymn number 565, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. And now as we make the gifts of our money and commit our time and talents to God's work in the world, the choir will sing for us now the anthem, Lord of all hopefulness.
Loving God, in glad thanksgiving for all your goodness, we offer you these gifts, the songs of our hearts, our gifts of money, the commitment of our time and our talents, and pray for the power to offer and present our very selves to you, a living sacrifice, dedicated and fit for your work, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The song of Hannah in the book of Samuel has striking resemblance to the song of Mary when she's told that she will bear God's holy son. And so we sing a musical setting of Mary's words to close our worship. Hymn 286, Tell Out My Soul the Greatness of the Lord.
The promise is this. The Lord shall keep thy soul. He shall preserve thee from all ill. Henceforth thy going out and in. God keep forever will. And so now may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us all, now and evermore. Thank you.